Have you heard of Dirty Water Don? His real name is Donald Gann, and he's one of the heroes that keeps our sewer systems running. He's been featured on the Discovery Show Sewer Divers, and you wouldn't believe this. He's found the most incredible things. Donald Gann and his brother John, who's also his partner, uh, are here this morning with us. Nice to see you, Don and John. Thank you for having Gann. us. Nice to see you. Your mom had a good time with the names, Yes, right? she uh, they says, had to rhyme. little rhyme scheme, yeah. A little Dr. <laughs> Seuss in the house. <laughs> so what do you do, Don? Tell, tell us about your, your profession. So on our day-to-day, -day, we are union divers at a local 1556. John is my tender most of the time. Um, we deal with sewers and piers. Um, dams, ships, husbandry, things of that nature. That's primarily our work. We, but we do a lot of sewer work. And we did a television show for the Discovery Platform called Sewer Divers, which was a great experience for us because we, uh, we knew the diving aspect, but we didn't know the theatrical aspect, which John here is dubbed One Take John. What, John, you got it done in one take? Like you knew how to About go 95% of the time, it was just, wow. I talked one take. Wow, that's, that's, that's very impressive, John. So. Now, I know you guys, I mean, I know you have your day-to-day -day job, but John, tell us a little bit, because you, you're looking for something right now in our waterway, right? Yes. Right now, we're looking for uh, mammoth tusks that have been dumped into the East River, uh, supposedly around between 1940 and 1941. Um, they were put there by the Museum of Natural History, supposedly, but we have some proof here at the Staten Studio that proves otherwise. Interesting. All right, so since John brought it up, mm -hmm. Don, what did you bring? Because you, found, so, you found some interesting things in your, your dive. This is one of the items we have found. Uh, one of our divers that works close to us, his name is Chris Ogden. Yeah. Um, this was one of the pieces we discovered in the East River. It's so a, what is that? That is a lower jawbone, where the back end of it would be, of a steep bison. They roamed the earth during the Ice Age with the mammoths. They, they kind of migrated side right. by side. And uh, yeah, this is this lower jawbone. That's crazy. It has Have no you been get, like, Do you get everything like verified and confirmed? Yes, yes. So we, who verified and confirmed uh, John that? Reeds himself, who is one of the grandfathers of discovering of bones in Alaska, he has over 150,000 specimens. Should you be holding it like that? I mean, is that well, like a... No? No, no. It's, it's been, okay. It's been bottom of the East River for 70 plus years. Yeah. I think it's okay to handle. There's not much more I can do to it. <laughs> so what else did you find on the bottom of the East River? Uh, we found this little gem. This is a statue of Yemen. I can't pronounce it. Yemia? Yemia. It's the goddess of waves and the mother of sirens. It's a beautiful statue, by the way. Well, when we found it, it was, she was not very beautiful. Okay, so do we have any idea on the age of that statue? Um, these, these busts were manufactured from this particular one from yeah. 1975 until 1984. And the company then says, has, you know, went under, but there's other manufacturers who make this. Mm. But this particular one was in that, that age group. Do we have any idea on the history of that I statue? Know. I don't know how it got there. <laughs> it, but people pray to this. Right. Um, certain ethnicities and religions, they, they look at this as a, a saint figure. Right. The and day we did find it, uh, we were actually talking about wrapping the hunt up. Yeah. Because we were like three, four weeks into it, and we're like, I don't think we should do this anymore. We're wasting a lot of money. It's very expensive to be out there on the water with our own dime, and that we pulled that up. Wow. Yeah. So you thought it was a sign it, from yeah, above we, to continue. Yeah, to continue yeah. going. Did you ever find any dead bodies while you yes, were? Yes, yes. Um, I personally have found three. Uh, another person on our dive team, Johnny Santiago, I believe he has eight or nine under his belt. Whoa. Yeah. You, you, you come across everything you can imagine in the East River because it's been navigable for over 200 years that we have clocked, yeah. and then the indigenous people also navigated it. So it's a lot of stuff down there. When you find those dead bodies, do you take them up to the surface and give them to yes, the police? Yes, well, typically speaking, we will call in to the New York Harbor Patrol, um, give them the location if they're underwater and it can't be removed. Um, for the most part, though, the bodies we really find, they're, they're floating, and we will secure mm. them to a pile of the boat, wow. and then we'll call the Harbor Patrol, and they come get everything. This is some job you two have. All right, I know you found other things that are so, now less... This, uh, this is a fuel transfer valve that's labeled Newark, New Jersey, and the naval number on it from the Navy, from a boat that sunk in 1819. Wow. It's called the USS Mary Ellis. 
So did we know that a, bunk, uh, a boat sunk in our Well, this particular area? find was found in the Long Island Sound. Okay. It wasn't the East River, but we were going from East River into Hell's Gate, which is the Harlem River, East River, and Long Island Sound all converting. And we just kept going down river one day, uh, me, Chris Ogden, this guy Tom, and we, uh, we dove a wreck over there, and this is what was on the bottom. Do you go dive in all kinds of weather? Mm -hmm. You do. Inclement matter, nice weather. It really, it, the diving is, the diver is the most comfortable person on the job. So if it's 10 degrees, yeah. I'm fine. I have hot water pumped in my suit. It's like yeah. being in a hot tub all day. And the big guy, he's cold all day. It's John, chilly. you get chilly. It's yeah. supposed to be good. Being cold is supposed to be good for the system, John. I don't, I don't mind it. He's, you don't, never, he's never sick, it. so. So, okay, so what's next for the two of you? What are you, what are so, you hoping? So uh, what's next now is we are working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with a major network. We're not allowed to say who, but with a major network, and we're filming uh, a television show over the topic. So they're coming down on the dives with you. Yep. Let's just say the network has a lot of history to it. Interesting. I think I know where you're going with that, John. Okay, if people want to find you and follow you and see your exploits, because mm -hmm. I know you post some of that stuff on social media. Yes, we do. How can they find you? Um, well, everyone on our team, you have uh, Johnny Pine Clash, you have Dirty Water Don, Sea of Cortez, <laughs> John Gansuer Divers, to name a few. We also have an Indiegogo account to try to raise some money to continue these expedites, because so far we've paid all out of pocket, and we've been there for over 73 dives as of now, and it's becoming expensive, a little pricey. Uh, yeah. About what, yeah, twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars so far. Uh, we're at thirty-two. Wow. Thirty-two thousand. Yeah. He doesn't thousand. keep the books. It's okay. No, it's okay. All oh, yeah. right, listen, it's so nice to meet both of you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I look forward to your next expedition. Thank you. Uh, Donald and John Gann, uh, follow them. Thank nice, you. Nice Thank to you. See you.